十主题目，请看大屏幕。十，美国电信与欧洲互联网产业发展的启示。二零一九年六月六日，工信部颁发了四张五 G 牌照，标志着五 G 商用元年正式到来。英国金融时报驻华盛顿记者发文，认为一九九六年推出的电信法案。成了原本辉煌的美国电信产业衰落的起点。该法案为提高电信行业的开放性，使原本监管很严的技术壁垒被打破。很多运营商为了建立起竞争壁垒，开始研发自己的技术标准，导致市场割裂、碎片化。同期，欧洲电信反而推出了统一标准，后来居上成为电信赢家。但在互联网产业的发展上，欧洲却远远落后于美国和中国。其中的原因之一，被认为是欧洲对于个人数据隐私过于严格的监管和保护。二零一八年，欧洲出台《通用数据保护条例》，被称为史上最严格的数据法。问题：如果你是政策制定者，上述两个实例对你有何启示？第一位选手来自美国精英学院 Franklin Young。第二位选手来自美国精英学院伊宣称，第三位选手来自美国精英学院 Priscilla Wu， 第四位选手来自美国精英学院 Angela Bai， 第五位选手来自美国精英学院 Helen Xia。Please begin your discussion. Okay, so I believe to start it off, we should start from number five. One briefly summarize your own opinion on this topic. Just by reading these two examples, I've learned that we can't go in just one direction. Only to make the best results out of making a policy, you're going to have to do compromises in going in both directions, not too strict and not too relaxed. I completely agree with Helen, um, but the internet industry is so large and expanding, and it's dominated by many large companies. And having a new openness, it will allow smaller companies to flourish. It will lessen competition, and what we need to discuss is whether barriers, if they're harmful or not. I think one of the main takeaways is that regulation can, the lack of regulation can actually hurt business. As you can see in the um, U.S. telecommunications industry, the lack of regulation led to the industry being disjointed and it reduced the quality of the products. Thank you guys for your opinion. Uh, on, on my behalf, I believe that the biggest part of this, judging by my own experience and after reading this article, is miscommunication. I'd love to go into more detail, but first I believe we should hear number one's opinion. Well, my opinion is that uh, freedom and uh, protection of data are two different directions that have to go. And usually it's best to go to a modest uh, middle instead of trying to go to one extreme, as both of them have their downsides. I think one of the main questions is do you think regulation usually we should go with more regulation or less regulation? Of course, there's a middle ground, but where is the middle ground? I think that's completely right. We have to ask the question, is over-regulation worth it? As seeing that U.S. is lagging very far behind, I mean, Europe is lagging very far behind U.S. and China. But I believe the answer is yes, but only on some levels. Um, each individual has the right to protect their own data, as I said, but openness can still bring in many benefits that we would like to explore. For example, the 2018 General Data Protection Law may have gotten caught, uh, may have had uh, some online creators uh, make less money from it, and uh, their jobs are actually online, and this is actually making their jobs significantly harder to make money from. I think business is actually a really big consideration because a lot of companies, in order to um, have, make more money, they make products that aren't as good as they could be. For example, we all know that phones come out with new versions every time, like every couple of months. And so do cars, like every year. And I think one thing to consider is that companies will make many versions with like very small upgrades and not as good products, so people will keep on buying new ones. Okay, thank you Franklin for talking about the copyright regulations earlier because I'd like to point out something. All of you guys are talking about how the more, the more exact regulations on technology seem to be more effective than the US's measures on sturdy comp competition. But in my own opinion, Article 13, the only reason why it limited so many online creators, creators was due to the lack of information shared by like, about the general, I guess, ministry of uh, whoever creates the laws in the, in the UK. Article 13 limits um, creators a lot because they didn't understand exactly how to, 
exactly um, the, how far technology has developed in the, uh, in the current present. So I believe why miscommunication is such a big role, plays such a big role in, the, uh, in this article is because 5G, when it was issued first in China, it was, it, was mis, it was misviewed by many other countries. Many other countries saw it as an extreme rise in the technology industry, at least for 5G. But in reality, it was far less, it, it was far less advanced than it, was, it really seemed, and this led, obviously, to what this article states. So I believe mis uh, miscommunication is the biggest point, as it led, to, it, le it led to, as in Article 13, online creators lose their jobs, and in this, the U.S. to lose. I agree with number, uh, student number two. And I also want to say that usually the people don't have, there's a disconnect between the people and the government, at least in America. Um, lots of times it's very hard to reach Congress people, and unless you're an interest group, you don't really have a foot in the door, and they don't really hear you. Also, normal people aren't that informed of politics and what laws or Congress people vote for unless it's very public, public side. So I think that's one of the major I for that. Uh, sorry, I think I think it, I think that also applies to the UK because, like I said before, many people lost their jobs because although they protested countless and countless times, just just because they were out of a new generation and the people working that were, that made the laws couldn't understand exactly what Article 13 implied. They still put the law into use, although it cost people tons of money in their, tons of money in their lives. Yes, Article 13 has seemed to put up a facade of miscommunication, and it is based on a lot of confusion that has stimulated a lot of negative effects upon these yeah. countries. If I was a lawmaker, uh, I would learn from this mistake and try communicating more effectively, first of all, and second of all, also trying to adapt more, uh, incl including all the states uh, in consideration such as America's, which had more freedom, but did actually cause a lot of problems for the economy. Um, I think we should give Helen a chance to speak her opinion, as uh, we've kind of been taking the mic over. Something else I'm sort of not <laughs> sure if this is going to something to point out, but something that may also cause problems is politics itself, because, because those who work in the government have many opinions on their own, and may as well impede on others who plan to try to correct it, which also causes a lot of problems when working out these policies and trying to figure things out. I completely agree. I also, I think one of the biggest things to learn from uh, this issue is that we need to have a bigger, better connection between the young people and politics, politicians, because in order to get into politics, usually you have to have a lot of experience so that usually makes people that are older uh, politicians, and they may not be able to understand the younger generation. However, the younger generation, again, are more technologically savvy, but sometimes aren't as well versed in politics and can't consider this stuff as a whole. But if we try to educate more people, younger people, about these politics and as the actual whole economy as a whole, we could try to make a uh, compromise both. Thank you, for, uh, thank you, Franklin and Priscilla. Uh, I personally agree with both these arguments in the fact that the disconnect between the government and the people, I believe the government, as they're an older generation, they have different points of views and different beliefs as a younger generation. So what, as, of, as they have said before, they, they believe that we should have a strong connection between the government and the people in all countries, right? Especially the U.S. as, as seen as in this article of this connect. Um, I believe that since the, since the younger generation understands technology better, they should they should have more of a view in these companies as the companies rushed and that's why they lost. I think that having these young people like he was talking about coming to companies, it could spur a lot of new innovation which could further advance the internet industry. And I believe in this prompt, it mentions that there are many barriers that cause competition. And one of them, I think, is the firewalls that are present in several countries due to government orders. It has, um, it has prevented several websites to be accessed, and much of the miscommunication can be based on that. I think I agree with Angela, and I want to add that the competition barriers make communication harder among consumers because, for example, Apple. You can't access iMessage if you're an Android user 
So when you use a certain product, you only get to interact with the people that use the same product, not people who also use the internet but may use a different software. Thank you, Priscilla. Um, I'd like to add, for example, in this article itself, one of the articles posted by the Washington uh, Post was labeled, Why America Cannot Compete Against Huawei. This statement itself would spark a fire in many companies as they would see this as a challenge. Uh, the, the way they phrased this title is one of the uh, one of the miscommunications that might have led to this failure. I believe that, uh, just to add on to number two, I believe that it should be phrased again. It, because if you look at the actual uh, uh, data inside the, uh, inside the uh, article, it's actually talking about the telecommunication, uh, telecommunications bill. Uh, and how the U.S. used to be much better at telecommunications before the actual bill was passed. There Anyone are else? Oh, yes. I would like to speak. Thank you. Um, there are several separations and fragmentations of the market due to all these competition barriers, whereas it says that the European communications have introduced a more unified standard and will later become the winner. Um, I wonder why that is. However, the, again, the European ones are actually more strict, and that was actually one of the causes of a uh, one of the causes of the decline in the economy. So, like the Americans went too much for freedom, but the Europeans now went too much for strictness and order. And yet, that caused failure on both sides. So, what do you guys think the main thing we can learn from this? Is it more like regulation or is it more communication between politicians and the people? There has to be a very delicate balance that we must maintain for this whole industry to thrive. Uh, I believe we are certainly working towards it, but both are very necessary, such as privacy. That's one of the main issues with the internet nowadays, but there also has to be an openness that sparks the fire of innovation within all the young people that we have talked about. I agree with her. I believe that those two topics you stated, Priscilla, actually have a very strong connection because regulation is led from the opinions of the people in many in many countries. So without the, without a sturdy communication, there can be proper regulations that would uh, result in the greater good. So I think what we can learn from this uh, these examples is that people have to have a better communication with the government and that there needs to be a balance of regulation. But another issue that comes up with that is how can the people reach the government on, ter on these terms? It's very difficult to issue any forms to them and thus difficult to change their aspect, which is why people must unite within the countries to bring out their opinions. Well, th that might be for the future right now because we are leading the future. Our generation is the generation Z of world. We're leading into it and we will try to fix these problems in the future. I believe we as humans learn from failure, so I, I think time is the best answer to your question. As time progresses, as we fail, we learn from those mistakes and we constantly improve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you real close. Okay, thank you for one more discussion. Please go back to your seats. 至此，我们第三轮。